Previously, I've provided instruction on how to create, save, and password protect an Excel spreadsheet, and how to lay out a sheet for documenting internet account and password information using Microsoft Excel 2007. In this segment, I'll show you how to organize and manage the spreadsheet in different ways that might be best for you. I am now opening the file from my desktop and entering the password to access that file. As you can see when I open the file, I am prompted to put in my password, which is the word passwords, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-S. -S -S. I'll click on OK, and the file is now open. Since creating the file, I've added several online accounts and their appropriate information. I've used the same password and date created information for each one of the accounts to expedite the process. As I've added information, I might need to adjust the width of a column so that the full amount of the info is visible. I'm making an adjustment to the account info column now as a review. As you can see, in cell A7, the information is not immediately visible so I will make this column larger. If that might be too large, I can always decrease the width. Additionally, I might have needed to add more column headers as different info regarding specific accounts needs to be documented. As I arrow across the spreadsheet, you can see there are several columns and several headers presently set up. Lastly, before entering an account and its pertinent information, I always go online and check as much of the info as possible, confirming that the current information is accurate. No need to put info into a file that does not work. Also, as you can see, I traditionally use all caps when entering my info with the obvious exception of the needed combination of lowercase and uppercase letters when it is mandated by the account and its relative information. As a reminder, it is very important to document upper and lowercase letters when that information is critical to the account, the password, etc. Also, blank spaces are very critical, so be sure to only use them when they apply. As you can imagine, the info in this file could easily extend well below the immediate screen view area. So now I will show you how to move about the spreadsheet while keeping your header row visible in order to know what column titles you are viewing. The process of locking certain cells to always be visible is called freezing panes. A pane being a cell or collection of cells which once frozen do not move as you navigate throughout the sheet. In this example, the final outcome will be to freeze column A and the header row so that the account info column and the header row are always visible as I move down and to the right through the list of online accounts. As a result, as I scroll or tab to the right, the account info column and header row will remain. Although there are many combinations of freezing panes, my final goal is to freeze column A and the header row. As you can see by me arrowing down my column, there is more data and now my header row has disappeared. Confusing to say the least. To freeze the first column in the header row, first click on cell B2. I'm moving my mouse to B2 and clicking on that cell. To know that I am in B2, you can look in the upper left above the data and the indicator of what cell you are in will reveal where you are. Now, on my toolbar, click View. When I click view, I then click on freeze panes. A drop down menu will appear. 
At this point, I'm going to ask you to click on the first option, which is Freeze Panes. This tells the program to freeze the column or columns to the left of where the cursor is located and also to freeze the row or rows above where the cursor is located. I am now clicking on Freeze Panes. You will now see a darker black line between row 1 and row 2 as well as a darker black line between column 1 and column 2. We have now successfully secured the first column and the header row from disappearing while moving about the spreadsheet. As you can see, as I move to the right, the account name column remains so I know what account I am viewing. Also, as I scroll down the screen, the header row remains so that I know what columns I am viewing as well. I am now back to A2 to continue. Now that I've completed the task of freezing the account info column in the header row, you can see that it makes sense to use this setting for ease of viewing. As I move about the spreadsheet, I now always see the account info documentation and the header row. Again, as I make edits to my file, it is prudent to save the file, so be sure to do so regularly. In the upper left, click on the Save icon. And of course, since this file has a name, Jim's password file, and a destination, my desktop, only one click is needed to save the file. Now that the info has been documented, the layout is as you wish and the file is properly saved, we can now work on tasks that help with the visual access and presentation of the information. The most needed task is that of sorting the info so that it is easy to reference. To that end, most people will prefer to have the data sorted alphabetically A to Z by account name in order to easily find the info. This process is called sorting and I will now discuss and demonstrate that process. Once you understand this process, you should feel comfortable knowing that your internet account info is safely documented, password protected, and accessible via any device that can connect to the internet. The process of sorting data is not complicated, but the specific steps are very important to a successful sort. Just like painting a wall is not inherently difficult, the prep is what makes the painting easy so be sure to follow the steps carefully. The most important part of sorting is selecting the data to be sorted. If you do not include all the data, you can easily jumble your information, making the spreadsheet information inaccurate. The most precise and in-control way to select all the data involves using a combination of the arrow keys and the shift key on your keyboard. Using the mouse can be much faster, but not as easily controlled. You've heard me use the word select several times, and that is precisely what needs to be done for an accurate sort. We will select the data. Many clients use the term highlight, which is what visually appears to happen, but the proper term is select. To select information to be sorted, I click on cell A1 in the upper leftmost column where the account info header is located. Then while holding down the shift key, with a finger from the left hand, I then use the down and right arrow keys to select the data down and to the right to include the last and most right piece of data that needs to be sorted. I'm now showing you how to select a small section of the data as a demo. Using my arrow keys, I can go to any cell location, and if that is where I want to begin the selecting process, I now hold down my shift key with my left hand arrow down to include the area I want to select and to the right to the area that I want to select. As you can see a frame comes around that area and that area is also highlighted in blue. If in fact this is not what I want to select it is easy to deselect by just tapping any arrow key on your keyboard. I have now tapped the up arrow and my selection has been deselected. 
Now I will select all the data that needs to be sorted using the process just described. I begin in column 1A, hold down my shift key, and then I proceed using the down arrow key to select to the last row of the data. I can do this one click at a time, as is demonstrated here, or hold down my arrow key and I can move more quickly through the column. I am now at the end of my data in column A and I will now arrow to the right to select all of the columns and then let go of my shift key. As all of the data is now selected, my goal in the next set of steps is to sort the data alphabetically by account name. Now let's sort the data. As the data has been selected, I carefully move my mouse to the toolbar and click on Data. The data ribbon bar is now visible. I now move my mouse to the Sort option and click on Sort. A drop-down menu appears. Now click on the downward facing caret to the right of the words sort by to get a list of the columns by which you can sort the selected data. If you have properly selected the data, then a list of the header row names will appear. In my case, you can see account name, user ID, password, etc. I can scroll through this list up and down and see all my different header row categories. I will click on account name as I wish to put the data in alphabetical order by this column. Under the words sort on, the default option is values. We do not need to change this. Under the word order, the default option should be A-Z, meaning sort the data using the value in the account info column alphabetically A to Z. As that is what we desire, no change is needed here as well. So on this screen, I have determined that I will sort by the column account name, by the values in that column, and put it in A to Z order. As that's my goal, I now click on OK. As you can see, there appears to be a problem as an account beginning with Z is at the top of the list. This error has occurred due to a data entry mistake. When data is sorted, the sort order is as follows. A blank space takes highest priority, then numbers 0 to 9, then letters A to Z. Although it might be difficult to see, the account beginning with the letter Z actually has a blank space at the beginning of the account file name, a typo I made while entering the info. In order for this list to be in proper order, I'll now need to review all of the results, edit any mistakes, and then resort, which I will do now. I'm going to click in this cell, and I will either retype the account name or remove the space. Now of course I have rectified the problem of the spacing but now I need to resort. So to review I click on A1, hold down the shift key arrow down the screen to include all of the info in column A, then using the right arrow key, arrow across the data to select all of the header row columns. On my toolbar, click Data, then click Sort, and since the sort was the same as last time, no changes are needed to be made, but it's a good idea to check to be sure. I am sorting by account name, 
the values in that column and A to Z order. Click OK and now you'll see that Zulily is no longer at the top of the list. Now that the data has been reviewed and properly sorted, I tap on any arrow key on my keyboard to deselect the data and can move about the spreadsheet as needed. As I add additional info, the sorting process will be repeated in order to keep the data in alphabetical order. As you can see, I can easily move about and find the information for any account as needed. As I am done this segment, I will now close my file. So as I move to the upper right and click on the X to close, of course I will be prompted to save the changes that I have made to my file. The answer is yes to saving the changes, and I will do so. Now you can feel comfortable knowing that your passwords are safely stored and protected. There are many additional nuances to customizing your spreadsheet, but those topics will be discussed in further sessions.